Hello. This week I'm joined by Associate Professor John Williams Mosley. Now John is also the uh, Director of the Centre for Australian Indigenous Knowledges at the University of Southern Queensland. Hello John. Morning. Now in your studies you've been looking at the history of the region and more recently I've asked you to have a look at the impact of colonisation and European presence on the Indigenous populations throughout the Asia Pacific region. Today we're going to specifically look at Australia and the experience of Indigenous peoples in terms of European invasion in Australia. So John, I wanted to ask you first of all, what have been some of the enduring legacies of European invasion on Indigenous Australians? Um, considerable. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that one of the um, most enduring legacies has been the factors that um, flow from original dispossession mm -hmm. um, in 1788, um, compounded by the likes of the um, protection policies, mm -hmm segregation, um, then subsequently the assimilation policies, um, all leading to a state of disadvantage for the majority of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Um, you see that in terms of the uh, social indicators which have us um, as a population um, suffering uh, still the highest incidence of uh, infant mortality and morbidity rates, uh, circulatory disease, diabetes, um, the fact that we still have a uh, earlier age at death mm -hmm. than um, broader society. Um, I think the last time I looked at that particular um, statistic, it was men, Aboriginal men, had an average age at death of 58. And for Aboriginal women, it was around about 65. Um, I'm trying to think of some positives uh, that might be called legacies. Um, of course, there being no treaty with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people like there were with the other colonised indigenous populations around the world, it's made it quite difficult for um, the circumstance of Aboriginal people to be taken in any way seriously. There's this continuing stream of ad hoc, mm. uh, ill-fitting policy prescriptions uh, to try to address some of the uh, different types of disadvantage, the social, the cultural, the educational, etc. Um, but of course, most of those innovative strategies are short term and probably the length of government, yeah. three to four years. Um, and then we start again. We have a saying, and I suppose it's uh, said by other Indigenous peoples around the world uh, that have been colonised, one step forwards, two step backwards. That seems mm -hmm. to be the way of the policy environment concerning Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this country. Um, so, the legacy is that there was dispossession, mm -hmm. where land, culture, language as part of culture, uh, traditional ways of knowing, uh, our social structures, 
all gone and in their place substituted with what we could only describe as uh, alien mm. social structures, including religion, um, which in essence have made us what we are today, um, being described as fourth world peoples yeah. in many respects. So, remembering I'm trying to be positive, um, I'm finding that rather difficult. And uh, personally, as a member of the Stolen Generations, um, I find it very difficult to, at times, come to terms with uh, the things that have been done to the majority of my family members and myself in the name of so-called assimilation. Mm. Um, and if anybody's interested in my thoughts, um, there is a reference that I can give. It's the ABC Frontier site, which um, has verbatim the address that I gave to the ACT Assembly um, on the occasion of its apology to the Stolen Generations. A little while back now, but still good stuff. Right. Yep, that sounds good. We can certainly put that up on the course. Mm. Well, you've raised the apology, and that's really quite a significant moment. Um, on February the 13th, 2008, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd apologised to Indigenous Australians. Kevin who? Kevin Rudd, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Apologise to the Stolen Generations, in particular, for the past mistreatment, hurt and suffering that was endured since white invasion. Now, what do you think Kevin Rudd's apology meant for Indigenous Australians and non-Indigenous Australians? But more importantly, what else needs to happen now for Australia to really go down the path of true reconciliation? OK. Um... It was a significant symbolic step mm. for an Australian government. Um, it did, of course, follow on from state and territory government's apologies mm. um, a few years earlier. Um, but a courageous move by a federal government. Um, it, as I said, was significance in terms of the symbolism mm. and I suppose a gingering up for a realignment with the reconciliation process which um, was formally initiated around about the 19 the early 1990s um, And of course, most of the strategies that went with um, a proposal for reconciliation were attached to the Bringing Them Home report. Um, apart from a few projects or programs that were funded which um, gave additional resources for Aboriginal people to find um, or trace their family histories, the idea of some sort of compensation for the mistreatment, the pain and the suffering for people affected by the assimilation policies, and I say policies because it was a um, series of um, state and territory governments um, initiatives over um, a significant period of time, and they would have changed and amended and refined, but given the broad name of assimilation policies. 
I don't know that there will ever be the same type of um, significant bipartisan support like there was at the time that the then Prime Minister made the apology on behalf of the Australian Government. I suspect not mm. and I also suspect that's why it's been so difficult for some form of acknowledgement in the Constitution mm. um, to be realised. Um, trying to be a half glass full type of person but I'm not real sure that um, I can say anything with conviction about what might follow. I think it's stopped at the symbolism it's all too hard, like a lot of stuff around Indigenous affairs. Um, yeah, I'm probably not able to take it to the next step because I don't think that Australian society is prepared. Right. So we've still got a long way to go. I think we have. Um, certainly might be helped by some formal acknowledgement in the Constitution, but, you know, that seems to be a battle over semantics yeah. rather than intent or spirit or goodwill. Yes. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And I think that's one of the important things about the, impo the apology is that we did have that bipartisan support for a moment, mm -hmm. but we need that for real action to happen into the future. For sure, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story and for your thoughts on these very important issues that the students will be looking at. You're welcome. Thank you, John.